Hello, hello. <laughs> Good evening. It's Wednesday evening. We're at like 4 p.m. now. It's been one of those weeks. You know, it happens. Uh, <laughs> I was starting to get worried I wouldn't get to do any filming this week, but I really don't want that to happen. I want this to be 20 solid weeks of episodes before, who knows. Um, but this brings up a great subject, something that I love about fish keeping, specifically goldfish keeping, is that, you know, a couple days go by, I don't even look at them. I'm not worried about them because uh, I have duckweed in all the tanks. They can eat. I'm up on my water changes, so nobody, everybody's good on water quality. Everybody's fine. Uh, so you can't really say that for like a dog, right? You have to let a dog out and feed it every single day. Um, so that's usually what I tell people. Um, some people ask me, is it, you know, easy to keep goldfish? Is it hard? People usually, you know, will compare it to a dog. Like, is it as hard as keeping a dog or easier? I think it's easier than a dog and cat. Cats are pretty easy, but like I have a massive setup, obviously. I mean, some people have bigger, but it's big, 240 gallons inside, 400 gallons outside. But if I had one tank, it would be a breeze keeping goldfish. If I could do one 40 gallon with two or three fancy goldfish in it, and maximum, oh man, 30 minutes a week of maintenance uh, and work. That's really, I mean, and that's what I had for a long time. For a long time, I just had one 40 gallon with two or three fancies in it. Um, of course, I made more work for myself, extra cleaning, extra feeding, because I was boring. So I have so little to do. But if you were someone who wanted to just have a couple fancy goldfish, you know, there's some things that you would want to do to set yourself up for success. But generally, a 40 gallon, two or three fancies, really, really minimum work for just a display tank. Really minimum. Definitely less than a dog or cat. But of course, the amount I have here, much more than other animals, I'd say. But could be worse. Could be way worse. It's really, it's really not even that bad which is crazy. It is kind of crazy that this many tanks really isn't that bad. I think if I was more uh, obsessed with algae scrubbing, it would be a lot worse, but algae is my friend. Algae cleans the water. I do clean it and scrub it, but it doesn't really bother me. So one less thing to worry about most of the time. Our guppy shrimp tank is looking good. It's clear enough, really nice. Uh, the guppy and shrimp are actually, I think they've done a fair amount, of, fair amount of cleaning in the substrate and on the wood and rocks and stuff. Um, so far, so good. I think I'll do, you know, a mini water change on this sometime this week and try to scrape some more of that algae away just for kind of a fresh start on this tank. Sesame's doing well. Also due for a small water change. I need to, the light is on right now, but there's so much duckweed. Or, uh, well, there's different types of floating plants here. There's so much, the light's not getting through. I need to scoop some of that out. Uh, they need a water change over here and the algae on the front scraped. Lovells has just continued to kind of sit in the corner. I don't know what her problem is. She's done this more and more. If I feed the tank, she'll swim normal. But when I'm not actively stirring up the water or doing anything, she just picks a corner and shoves her face in it. So I'm a little worried. I don't know what the deal is. She has no physical signs of illness besides just sitting there. And then down here, Mrs. Tomato and Unnamed. I still, I gotta name that guy. I really need to. Drop name suggestions in the comments for that ranchie right there. Um, <clears throat> the little sponge filter is doing great. I'd love to get a bigger one at some point. This is kind of doing nothing nowadays. I don't know why. This moving media filter, that's what it's supposed to look like. It's doing great. This one, really lame. I think I am gonna end up just taking this out uh, because I have something else. I, and I'm gonna run a completely new airline tube to make sure that I, I, something's wrong with that. Maybe it's the check valve. You can see it right back there. 
Maybe it's the check valve reducing the airflow or what. I'm gonna put a totally new airline uh, for something else. If you go there, you'll see. While this is filling up a little bit, I'll continue my little tangent about how goldfish can be easier than other pets, you know, as long as you don't get in over your head, which may happen. I mean, that's what happened with me. I got dissatisfied with just one tank and got a little crazy with it. But when you are trying to have just the bare minimum, keep it simple, you want a nice goldfish tank to look at for other people to enjoy. Um, it is easy maintenance wise. That doesn't mean there are other little areas that can be a little tricky, like picking the right goldfish can be tricky. Um, who you buy them from, the health of them, because anybody who's kept goldfish or other fish knows that one of the most stressful things can be sick fish, um, not keeping up on maintenance. And so, that's kind of where you got to be careful when you're looking for simple as possible. Probably, you know, you want to buy from a good breeder or importer. You probably don't want, uh, <laughs> well, you want ones in good health, not like mine too here. Blubbles and breadstick, they were rescues, okay? I got them from someone else who was moving. They have been not the healthiest fish from the start. Uh, Breadstick has permanent swim bladder disorder. Blubbles has always been a little floaty, but generally okay. Um, but I mean, you can see now she kind of just has given up on life. But yeah, if you pick the right fish from the right importer, their health is good, you can make it pretty easy on yourself. Um, sometimes that can take time. You know, if you're trying to keep things simple, you put a couple fancy goldfish in, you might find that the first set dies Got to go buy another set. Because um, that aspect is not the easiest. The health of the fish is kind of always a difficult thing. You got to figure out who you like buying from. You got to figure out what your water straight from the tap is like where you live. Because uh, some places you're just going to have less success just because your water quality wherever you live is poor. And uh, then maybe it's not so possible to have an easy for the general public, I'd say, you know, because people think you can keep a goldfish in a bowl. You can't. But a couple goldfish in a 40 gallon, like, it's not that hard. It's not as easy as a bowl, but they're also going to have a way better life in a nice 40 gallon. Okay, we're doing Sesame's tank here. Uh, as far as this tank, it doesn't, doesn't need a full water change. It looks dirtier than it is because I just stirred up some of the duckweed. Took a little out so the light works a little better. Come on. But as far as this tank, um, I think I'd like the dark horses to be in here. My two darkest fish, um, Sesame, the black tyranchu. Uh, and I have a, what would you call it? A bronze short tail uh, ranchu that I got from uh, Wen Goldfish, I think. No, no, not from Wen. JY Aquarium? I can't remember. Man, I'm losing track of where I got what fish from. Um, but basically, it's a bronze ish color, small, still kind of baby size. Um, I say short tail because. Its tail is extremely short. Like um, it was short when I got it, and I haven't. I've watched it closely. It doesn't have fin rot, but it has a really, really, really short tail. Maybe shorter than even you know should be. But basically, I think it'd be fun to have the two darkest fish in here. I think they're both females, so that could be you know they'll have a nice chill relationship in here. Uh, but Oh, and espresso is the name of the bronze colored one. You'll see in a moment why. 
Uh, so I'm gonna do a little water change first. Then I'm gonna drip acclimate espresso because the pond water, you know, just in case it's a significantly different uh, pH mainly and water hardness because uh, there's terracotta pots in this tank uh, and the outside tank gets, you know, a lot of rainwater. There could be some big differences uh, in how the water is. So we'll, we'll do a drip acclimation. So this is how I like drip acclimating. One end in the tank, uh, I put one of these adjuster valves so I can limit the flow. Uh, and you know, if it's more urgent that they get fresh water, I'll just have an airline tube straight pour in. It's a lot quicker, but still not that quick. Um, but for something like this, for espresso going in here, where I'm worried about the water quality uh, difference, uh, I'll show you how slow I'm gonna make this drip. Okay, so you can see it's not slow, but it's not fast either. So I will drip acclimate, let's see. There she is, espresso. You see what I mean by her tail being extremely short? Especially on one side, one side shorter than the other. Uh, in the past, I thought maybe she had fin rot in the past. Okay, she doesn't like the light. I'm gonna stop shining on her. I thought she had fin rot. Um, but other fish I've had that had fin rot, uh, it, the tail portion actually grew back when I gave them, you know, good water conditions after a while. Uh, but that's not the case with espresso. She's been in my care for not super long, maybe five or six months, uh, and it hasn't grown back. So I kind of am worried that it never will. Uh, but uh, we'll see. So I'm going to finish the water change. Continue. To, I'll let that drip acclimate till the water is probably three quarters of the way full in the bucket. Uh, maybe an hour. Uh, we'll see. Check back in. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll finish the water change here. Do a little siphoning there. I want a full water change for them too. I've also been thinking about something else for my tanks. Um, my blue velvet shrimp tank is doing very, very well. It's just like a, uh, I think it's a five gallon out in my main living room. And uh, blue velvet shrimp are going crazy. They're breeding. There's a bunch of them. And I'm starting to think about seeding in the blue velvets to really all of these tanks. Because either the goldfish will eat them, win-win, that's food, or in tanks where they have more hiding places like the um, terracotta tank, they'll just be an awesome extra fixture in the tank. You know, um, because they'll have plenty of, you know, they'll be able to hide and swim away from the goldfish. Shouldn't be too hard from them. Uh, they'll help keep things cleaner. Uh, more stuff to look at in all the tanks, really. Um, because the only, really the only downside that I'm aware of of keeping shrimp with goldfish is that they can get eaten. And so if you're not really worried about that, like if it, if it was your only tank with shrimp, Sure, it'd be a little more sad. Uh, but because I have other dedicated shrimp tanks, I don't mind, you know, seeding them into all these tanks. And uh, if you think that's crazy, go ahead and take a look at the ingredients on your uh, goldfish pellet that you use, because most of them, shrimp is included. Of course, it's not. I don't think it's of the type of shrimp that I'm going to use, the neocardinia. But uh, still. Okay, so we have this all apart for good access to the airline tubing. Check out the old Quan V moving media filter. Uh, and I'm gonna work out what we need to do for our surprise, surprise, two bubbler goldfish. I think we're gonna put those two in there with the sponge filter, just for, cause I mean, that sponge filter is doing really well on its own. That one's basically been doing nothing, been doing nothing. So yeah, we're gonna do it. Okay, I think we're ready to rock and roll here. Uh, I'm going to have both of them running to a Y, to a check valve. Always remember to have your check valve. That just makes it, if you don't know, that makes it so uh, that if the power went out or something happened, uh, that basically water wouldn't run backwards down the airline and destroy 
your air pump and more importantly in my opinion um, could end up flooding if left alone long enough you know it's not fast water flow through this tubing but if it reversed and for some reason started pouring underneath that would be bad so check valve so the water only goes one way and then i have an adjuster on the end here uh, so we're going to wiggle this this uh, behind and in place it's going to be a little annoying but not, not too too terrible okay it is finally all worked out properly did i make a mess sure but it's not that big a mess uh, we're at several hours later i've kind of been working on it off and on those look so cool but um espresso is nearly ready to go in i'd say that's filled up quite a bit more um so i'll, I'll top off that tank add espresso shortly i'll clean this up first though and get a few good shots of that finally being complete this turned out really 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 cool those bubblers were <laughs> i mean what a great find from the thrift store those two statues of goldfish drilled through put air stones in um i don't think putting in air stones made a difference i should have just put the airline tube but whatever it's done now and they look really really great uh the only thing i ran into was you'll see up there at the top the left one has another adjusting valve on it the right one doesn't so basically so i had to uh turn down the pressure to one of them and it equalized it out so i had to kind of balance and i think i got it just perfect um, that's like the exact same amount of bubbles from both of them so this is a major win this thing is sweet now eventually i mentioned it i do i like that sponge filter it's working well uh, but i i, I want to get one bigger sponge filter uh, for that spot just because you know more aeration is good but you know i use one sponge filter per tank usually i want it to be a, a well working one to carry some heavy load because uh goldfish are dirty and uh, i don't know if i've said this before but it's not like i'm set on sponge filters i like sponge filters they work well for me but really the main reason i use them is because any other type of filter i would have to plug in one for each of these tanks and it would be so so incredibly loud in here with like you know six hang on back filters six canisters uh it would be it would be a whole nother thing and so the reason i like and use sponge filters is because i just have one large air pump down there putting out all the air for all the filters at the same time um, and also i mean if i had six hang on backs that's a lot of things plugged in a lot of power strips um, so this way literally one thing plugged in powers all these pumps we're looking at here okay we got espresso in here with sesame we can see they're already buds getting reacquainted with one another they've been together before uh but espresso here scared me really really bad because when i first scooped her out of the bucket held her in the net she did not move at all she was holding still gills not moving not flopping around I was like, oh God, did she die from the transition? What's going on? Put her back in. No movement, just chilling in the net. Lift her back up, still not moving. I was like, oh God. I'm like, maybe it's an oxygen thing. I didn't put an air stone in. I left the tube dripping to kind of hit the surface of the water to knock up an oxygen. But then I dropped her in and she started swimming right away. So she was just like fully accepting her fate with me picking her up in the net. She's doing great doing just great but it, she scared me i was like why are you chilling so hard in the net it's hilarious okay so she trusts me to move her wherever i need i guess because as soon as that net touched her she was playing dead Whew, man close one on that note that's it for today this has been a productive afternoon evening i needed to do all that make up for monday tuesday so ooh. Good morning or evening. It's uh, 
Thursday. Thursday evening. I know where I am in space and time. Don't worry about that. Um, everybody's doing good. Espresso moved in from the pond. Doing delightful. Fed all of them earlier in the day. Everybody's doing good. Um, the new bubblers are working great. No problems there. Everything else is pretty much the same. I'm in kind of a limbo mode with the top two tanks. I want to breed fish and have room for more babies. But also in the meantime, they get a lot of algae. I want something to be in there so the cycle doesn't crash. Actually, it probably already has. No fish being in either of the tanks. Probably kind of just reset the whole nitrogen cycle in both of them. I don't know. I'd have to test the water. But I'd love to put one fish in each of the tanks. But also, like, I'm considering paring down my fish anyways, because I'm going to be breeding. So, I don't know. I'd like to begin choosing what fish I'm going to keep before I start breeding. And I think, well, I definitely want to keep Sesame. Had her a long time, one of the first fish. Uh, she's small because I didn't get her when she was a baby. They usually, if they don't grow a lot in their first year, then they don't grow a lot kind of ever sometimes. Um, espresso, I want to keep. Super cute. Love her. Mrs. Tomato and Unnames down there, definitely want to keep. Uh, breadstick, definitely want to keep. Blubbles, her quality of life is going down with her just sitting in the corner. I don't know what that's about. I might, I have an antibiotic um, goldfish pellet. Now normally, you know, you don't want to just throw meds at something you don't know what's going on, but like, this tank gets clean water a lot. Uh, antibiotics can't hurt. Well, maybe it can. Maybe I won't, I don't know, we'll see. But basically, I want to keep Blubbles unless she's doing bad, then we'll see. Uh, outside fish, Peach, the uh, single tail fantail that's orange, uh, I'd like to keep, and um, Fluffy, the pom-pom goldfish, I'd like to keep. All the other ones outside of the pond, I'm kind of okay rehoming. Um, there's two, three arandas, two, and three fantails. Three arandas, three fantails, six fish that I'm okay to rehome. They're good fish. I just, I need to make room for my breeding projects, um, which I hope to be Izuma Nankins. But I was thinking today, Pom Pom is a big goldfish. Peach is going to be a big goldfish. I was thinking what a fun breeding project it would be to try to make like as big of a fancy goldfish as possible. Um, like what, you know, like my biggest fish, breed them out of their babies. What are the biggest fish, you know, breed those. And, you know, not really, not focusing on variety or type of fancy goldfish, but just like breeding the biggest fish together and seeing the largest goldfish I can get. Because I don't know if you've ever seen Google like jumbo arandas. Those things get so big. Uh, and so I'm wondered, wondering like if if that specific special variety can get that big. I mean, I don't know if you've seen them. They're like, when you're looking at the edges of the fins, it's almost like a soccer ball size. Um, if, if they can make kind of a specific variety that big, it's generally going to be more delicate, harder to do. So I'm wondering with just random different fancy types how big could one get so that's kind of just another breeding project that kind of have in mind for one day in the future i don't know when i have these few things that like i want to accomplish with fancy goldfish over the next however long i keep them izumo nankin breeding is one trying to breed a massive goldfish of any type kind of a random type a wild type if you will this is the second one another one is um if you haven't seen lemon pearl scales they're basically solid yellow um pearl scales i really really want to do try to make or find and breed uh fully gold yellow ranchus i think that would be 
very, very interesting. I have seen a couple pictures of them. They exist already, but obviously not, not well known, not very many of them out there, mostly in Asia anyways. So that's kind of a third thing. Um, so those are my aspirations kind of as a goldfish breeder. Uh, maybe I'll add things to it. There's probably other things I'll get to sooner than that. Those are just some things I want to do at some point. But for today, uh, I don't have a lot on the agenda. I think I just want to put some blue velvet shrimp in, um, well, the shrimp guppy tank, because it has no blue velvets. And I'm going to try in the terracotta uh, tank first. Uh, the other ones are a little iffy. Maybe the carpet algae tank could use some shrimp. We'll see. And over here at our blue velvet shrimp tank, uh, at first glance, you're like, oh, that's nice. But then if you look a little closer, and our shrimp population is really doing quite well. There are a lot, lot, lot of blue velvets. Um, and I believe hiding back there is a mama with even more. She's all buried up. She's got a bunch of eggs on her. And so the population is stable enough where I'm not concerned about wasting any fish or, I mean, wasting any shrimp. Um, I'm going to do this pretty casually. I'm literally going to take my turkey baster and suck up um, maybe five or six and just kind of let them in the other tank. I'm not worried about drip acclimation um, because I'm not worried about losing any. And if they die, they die. The goldfish will eat them. Not really a big deal in my opinion. Some other people might be upset at that, but we're going to give it a go here. And there's our mama with a bunch of eggs. So good job. Keep it going, mama. Let's try to get a couple of these maybe right on the rock here. Right on the rock. Come on. Come on. Got them. Maybe I'm going for the smaller ones just because I don't want to hurt them. Getting them in here. Let this go. Oh, no. I lost the one I grabbed. No. Get back here. No. Okay. First attempt, we only got two in. So this might take a couple, a few tries. Okay, we're gonna call that good for now. I got probably eight in this tank. Oh, you can actually see one right there floating too. So, oh, it's swimming. It's good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and I got maybe four in that tank. I put a couple in there too, you know, just to see what happens. So, that's a good start of uh, sharing the love as far as our blue velvets go. So, see what happens. Good evening. It's Friday. Another busy day. We're in the evening time. Um, not much more to do for the fish today, but I figured we can do a little feeding. Try to get some good clips of them munching on their pellets.
Good morning. It's Saturday. Uh, we're at like almost 12. Um, there's nothing really specific I'm trying to do with the fish today. But tomorrow's going to be busy, so I know I'm not going to get too much with anything for them. And so I think I might do a little siphoning of... I, I fed them a little heavy yesterday and today. So I want to do a little siphoning. Um, the algae on the front here is growing fast for some reason, so I need to scrape that. Uh, it's really rainy outside. Pondfish are getting a lot of fresh water. Maybe I'll, I'll show you a clip of the overflow working well, because uh, it's working great. Uh, it's been a little warm, warm rainy this week. So a couple times I have fed the pond goldfish because it was like, it was like 57 Fahrenheit in the water. So I was like, you know, they can have some food. Why not? Uh, I kind of alternated feeding them the gas release Kenta feed because it's kind of a lot of wheat germ, not super heavy protein. And then the regular JY aquarium pellets I have are out there. So as of right now, I haven't spotted any of the shrimp in this tank. Um, I'm pretty sure they're just hiding in the plants. Um, hopefully some survived. But if not, you know, the plants will absorb them, nature, and uh, I drive it at least. It is still really dark in this tank. I need to take more of the floating plants away from the top, let a little more light in. Okay, so that water change has started. I always scrub the front and stir up the tank. Uh, gently, just so that, you know, the water change accomplishes more. Pick up the poop back behind the pots. Uh, make sure a lot of particulates get siphoned out. So I'm going to get a coat on and I'll show you a quick peek of our overflow, how it's working. Okay, it's nice and rainy, which is great news for our pond fish. Let's see, everybody's doing pretty good this morning. Fish free Bezos, chilling as always. Um, in my thinking for breeding fish, you know, eventually soon, hopefully considering what fish I'm okay getting rid of, I think all these front fish right here, uh, the two arandas, three fantails right here, I'm okay rehoming them. Um, they're good fish. They've been fun to have, but they're not, you, you know, they're not what I'm looking to dive into as far as goldfish breeding and keeping. So I'm, I'm probably happy to rehome those at some point. Um, I want to keep pom-pom for sure. Love pom-pom. The other Aranda is also I'm fine getting rid of. Nice and rainy. We see our downspout filters pumping out some water from the roof. There is a fish in here. Where's Peach at? Peach. Oh, she's over here. Right there. Peach, the kind of... I was told Peach is a single tail fantail, and I'm inclined to believe that because she's a little chunkier than a like a comet, but she only has a single tail. Um, I want to keep her just because she's so good for out here in the pond, hardy fish, don't have to worry about someone to help eat algae. And like when I when I feed that tank pellets, sometimes the, the pellets that float on the surface that don't get eaten will travel down the tube and get in here. And so Peach is like a great cleanup fish because she'll get those pellets super hungry. Um, butter overflow, working great. Let's follow it over here. And uh, you see, got water coming out, slowly but surely. So they are getting a massive amount of clean water. Um, eventually, I want to make this hose longer. You know, I want this to drain a lot farther out. I was going to use this hose, but I didn't realize that um, it's totally missing a hookup on one end. So I may just buy a new end to it, or I may just buy a new hose, I'm not sure yet. Because I want to run it all the way like down there by my compost bin. Um, so the water's really flowing quite a distance. And then that way, well, I'll show you. Let's, let's turn on the lower release valve, uh, and we'll see the flow that this thing gets here. Okay, Peach, you better stay away from the inlet there. Let's turn this, uh, which way? This way, I think. Nope. This way, yep. Okay, it's on. 
See, I don't know what's better. If, if it's better to close the top valve or leave it open for, like, a vent. But uh, either way, that's working. Flow increases. Okay. So we can shut that off. Nope, wrong way. <laughs> I'll get it one of these days. Maybe I'll mark it with some kind of arrow so I always know what way to turn it. Okay. I don't know what way Peach went, but... Just want a closer look at how much water we're getting here. Oh, yeah. Nice. Lots of fresh water for them. Now, normally, because we're kind of in the wintertime, normally you would shut off the UV filter um, when it's not pond season, meaning like spring and summer, fall. Um, but... With, with the different risk of like parasites and bacteria from the roof, you know, water pouring down, I feel like the extra sterilization from the UV filter can be kind of beneficial. So we'll really, we'll know for sure in springtime because springtime is when any illnesses show themselves. Um, and last spring I did lose some fish when the weather warmed up. Uh, spring reveals what illnesses they have because their metabolism speeds up and the bacteria and the sickness, whatever it is, speeds up. So I'd like to see what difference, if any, having UV filter makes, uh, leaving it on through the winter time. A few water changes done over here for espresso and sesame. Looks really good. Uh, and I spotted a minute ago Oh, I can see a shrimp right there. See that? See that right there? That's a blue velvet shrimp living its life. So that's great to know that the water balance in this tank didn't just totally wipe them out. Happy to hear that. Doing a water change for Blubbles and Breadstick over here. Breadstick's doing very well. Blubbles, you know, has been doing this in the corner thing. And it, it's so dirty because I just stirred up everything, squeezed the filter, so... Um, Blubbles, you know, she's starting to get some, like, you know, fungus on her wen, on her head, from sitting it on the corner. Nothing, you know, super deadly yet, but I don't know what to do to help her besides, um, I'm considering giving her salt baths, maybe, or, um, possibly methylene blue baths, um, I'm like, does she need antibiotics? Does she need anti-parasite meds? See, she can swim fine if she wants to, but then she kind of just goes back to listing. Um, but a big step in the hobby I haven't taken is I don't have a microscope. And so I can't make any specific decisions about meds without, you know, specifically <laughs> seeing any real symptoms. And right now there's no real symptoms. Um, I should take a look in my goldfish book again. of uh, Because being listful uh, is the symptom of a few things with no, you know, definitive answer. So I'll have to look into that. Um, I'm going to do a full water change for them. And I'm going to do just a little siphoning because I want, I want the poop off of the cool goldfish. Because I want the shots to be a little clearer with the pure white fish. Hello, it is Sunday, another busy day. We're at like 6 p.m. now, so not much more to do with the fish. Uh, I think I'll do a couple more uh, clips of the fish just for you to enjoy the beauty. But uh, the real thing I want to show you is this tie. See those? Those are crown pearl scales on this tie right here. Which is crazy. Because like this is one of the few goldfish ties I've ever seen. This is on Amazon. It's not super high quality. But it's a goldfish tie nonetheless. So I got it. 
but it's just weird to me. There's no Ranchu ties. There's no Aranda ties. But a crown pearl scale tie? I'm not complaining because it's super cool, but it's a really weird choice to put on a tie. So yeah, like the video and share for support of the, well, how about this? Like and share so that I can start a goldfish tie fund. Maybe one day that'll be part of my merch, huh? If I get to the point where I can produce merch, goldfish ties, different varieties. If you want that to happen, get support. Thank you.